My name is Devishi Jha. Let's, let's get started. So my experience, I am a freshman. I'm a ninth grader at Valparaiso High School in Valparaiso, Indiana. I started Python in fourth grade. Coincidentally, I started it from watching a PyCon tutorial, so that was my first introduction into Python. And I have thought, I've taught Python at my local library, and so teaching, and I've been taught Python by, from elementary school to, to now, just many different coding um, and Python, so. Okay, so an overview of the talk. Um, I'm first gonna talk about how schools currently teach coding um, and some pros and cons in that, and then how to teach Python big ideas, so big concepts and just how I think you should teach Python to kids that are in middle school and late elementary school. And then just logistics, like computer access and after school clubs, individual learning, things like that. All right, so one question that I get a lot is when to start learning Python, and this is very important. And my answer to that is usually just that it varies. It varies a lot. I think that first, when you start learning your basic operations, you know your addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, using exponents, and you know your basic algebra skills, you can solve algebraic equations, even knowing like systems of equations till then, that's a really good start because you have those concepts needed to learning Python, and then you can definitely get started. For most, that's usually middle school or late middle school, but it really depends on the person. It could be earlier or later than that, and it would be fine. So yeah, and then before I came to this talk, um, I talked to a lot of my friends and the first thing I asked them was, what do you think of computer programming? I didn't specify Python, I didn't specify anything, that was just the words I told them. And their answers, some of them thought it was amazing, but for the people that had problems with computer programming, their answers were usually in two main groups. The first one was this, they were like, oh gosh, computer programming, oh gosh. Um, and they thought it was hard and just really hard to understand. The second group of answers were like, oh my gosh, computer programming, geez, I fell asleep. And then I asked them after that, I was like, hey, did, did you, have you tried? Have you tried programming? Have you tried Python? What's your experience here? And they're like, yeah, I, I tried some at my school and, and this, is, this is what came of that. And I was like, oh wow, okay, so there's probably something that's, a little, a little wrong with how um, the schools are teaching it or something. That's why these answers are coming out from my friends. So then I explored that a little further and here is what I found. The answer to why students are having these problems, they're saying, oh, computer science, oh geez, too hard, too boring. It's not really about Python or starting a computer language like that. It's more about pre-Python or what they started before Python. And these are three of the main ones that were taught in my school districts and school districts before that. The first one was a typing class. This is personal experience. When I was in elementary school, all the way up to seventh grade, we had 45 minutes of every day where instead of learning any type of computer science or programming at all, we sat around a table and there was a teacher and we just typed. We didn't do anything. We just typed onto a Word document and learned our typing skills. It didn't really help us, we just didn't learn anything, we typed. And the problem with this is that students like us, we don't really need to know how to type as a class. We don't need a class to teach us this. Here's an example. When we get our cell phones, when we get our phones for the first time, we need to find the fastest way to text our friends everything. And that's why we adapt, we evolve, we learn how to text extremely fast. And the same thing can be said for typing because when we need to do our homework, when we need to access knowledge, we need to learn how to type and we need to do it fast. And students, we can figure out how to do that. We don't need a class to tell us that. Instead, we can use a class to teach us actual programming techniques. So next we can talk about Scratch. Scratch is also used before Python, and it's another great tool. It's in the form of blocks, as many of you guys know. You use blocks, you put them together, and then you make um, uh, animated cat move across the screen, or you make audio appear. That's what Scratch does. And it's great for elementary schoolers who are starting, Python, or starting to explore computer science or um, just having a beginning to coding in general. But the problem with that is that sometimes Scratch isn't used at the right time. Scratch is great for elementary school, but when students have algebra skills and they know how to use their addition, subtraction, they know their operations, they can go ahead and start with an actual programming language. 
And instead of using Scratch, which is just dragging blocks, they can actually start using Python. They can start with the language. And lastly, we have MIT App Inventor. This is another um, personal experience. Last year, when I was in eighth grade, we had a class, and it was our technology class. And in it, we used MIT App Inventor. It's very much like Scratch. It has the same blocks idea. And then instead of making it on a website, you connect it to a tablet, and you have somewhat of an app. And you can um, make an animated cat move across the screen with an app instead. So we used MIT App Inventor. But the problem was, the kids in that class, we were all eighth graders. We could solve our quadratic equations. We knew what we were doing. We were good with algebra. And we could have started Python. And the problem was, that's where all those responses came that they said that Python or computer science was boring. They said it was boring because they started with using MIT App Inventor instead of actually using Python when they had all the uh, tools necessary to do that. So it's really not about Python and how teachers teach that, but it's about what comes before. And timing is really important in that, and knowing when a student is ready to start what thing. So yeah, just going into Scratch versus Python. Scratch is good for teaching basic tools, like if-then statements, loops. It's good for explaining all that. And it can be started as early as second grade, first grade, elementary school, any time like that. And it's a great creative environment. It has a great visual interface. It's very colorful for students. And they can make fun projects. And Python should ideally be introduced after Scratch. The only problem is you need to know when to do that. You can't introduce Python too early and have students scared out of their minds by looking at the crazy code, or you can't have students um, introduced to Python way too late, doing Scratch in eighth grade when they could easily be doing if statements on Python. It could be, um, timing is really important there, so that's, yeah. So, okay, another reason why Python should definitely be introduced at a middle school level is because, okay, here is Scratch. You use it, many schools are now using it in middle school, which is a little late in the game, but look at it. It's beautiful. It's so colorful. You see that cat. It just it makes you happy. And then here, this is just a random picture of code. This is what high school coding is like. Because once you enter high school, you're faced with AP computer science, which is a rigorous training. In, they use Java as their programming language, but nevertheless, it's rigorous training in that. Or there's advanced programming competitions. It's a huge jump going from the happy cat to, to this. So, so you, may, you need to make sure that there's some sort of a buffer between these. You need to have some sort of a step. You go from scratch to maybe in uh, beginning level Python to something like this. Because jumping from scratch to hard computer science is why many people uh, say that computer science is hard. Because there's no middle step. They're taking a huge leap and they're almost falling off a cliff when they get to high school computer science. So just a summary on Scratch, it mimics programming languages. It's a great start. Just know when to use it. Timing is extremely important. And if it's done correctly, it, there are consequences to that. All right, so the next part that I'm going to talk about is just how to teach Python or any um, programming language. And it's more big picture concepts. It's um, just tools that I thought worked when I started teaching kids. The first one is give to students time to explore. So when I started teaching Python, that's a picture over there, I started by introducing, okay, here, Python is a calculator. You can add two numbers together. Wow. So then kids started adding numbers together. And then two seconds later, I was just through with explaining that, and someone raised their hand, and they're like, how do I square a number? I just, I just need to know. And I was like, oh, wow, okay, you're, you're a little far along. So that just goes to show you that Students are really curious, ex especially kids. They really want to know everything. Right after you explain one thing, they're just five steps ahead of you. So give them time to explore. Don't sort of rein them in, because that almost stops their curiosity, and that's not good, because curiosity is very, impor very important. So give them time to explore. Also, include fun with your necessities, because as students are learning their for loops and their if statements, they're like, OK, OK, I'm doing this. But also make sure you do something fun with it. Try making it into a challenge. Try making it into a game, a competition, something that really makes them want to do it even more. 
because it keeps their curiosity going, and that's extremely important as well. Going along with that, games and programming problems are super helpful when you're trying to make programming fun for kids because then you can um, add these things maybe on a specific day of the week if you're teaching a class, make it a fun day where you use games or some sort of hard challenge. So that's really important. Next, just more on how to teach big picture concepts. Make sure there's a talking environment. Usually in programming, kids imagine that clip art thing of just someone with a computer and it's like, okay, okay. But conversation is extremely important. Just like we're all here, we're all here to talk about programming and what we're doing. And so talking is really important because you get to share your ideas with others. Going along with that, make sure you answer questions that students have early on in the game. So Python is a relatively easy language to understand for kids that are in middle school. It has less of crazy syntax. It's usually easier for students. But when kids start learning programming, no matter what it is, they're really, it's really hard for them to make sure all their indents are right or they're putting the parentheses in the right spots. So make sure you answer their questions about that early on because sooner or later they're going to write a huge piece of code, forget a parenthesis, and then just not, not know what they're doing. So it's very important to make sure the questions are answered. And going along with that, helpers are really encouraged. That doesn't mean you need to have some professional Python person come in and just explain everything. It can just be, suppose one student that you're teaching understands what you're saying and then no one else does. Have that one student go around and explain it to the other students because the other students will like that because it's a friendly face teaching them how to do it. And then the person that's explaining also gets to sort of ingrain their knowledge about what they're learning because teaching is honestly the best way to learn different things and make sure you include examples that's the last thing because okay this is also personal experience when I start first started learning Python and there was just I don't know a paragraph about how to do a, a for loop or just something something simple like that if there was a paragraph on that I read the first sentence then I dozed off then I skimmed the rest and it was done. It was fine. But that's, that's not how you do it. It's very important that you include examples because kids do get bored if there's a huge paragraph in front of them. They tend to just look at it and nothing really goes to their head. So if you try doing it yourself while you're teaching or just have them do it and then try an exercise by themselves, it gives them chances to try it by themselves instead of reading a paragraph about something that they have no idea what they're doing for. So examples are really important. Questions, helpers, and a talking environment. So the last part of this is going to be just logistics, computers and um, individual learning and after school clubs. So in my school district, we have two main ways that we get students computers so that they can learn. There's one, there's a one-to-one -one program. We use that. I have my own Chromebook from school. They give us Chromebooks that we can use. We can bring them home and then bring them to school, which is great because if we learn something, if we learn how to code something in school, we can always practice it at home later. So right here, I have a quote. This is from our middle school principal who was in charge of bringing Chromebooks to every student at the school. She definitely, she talks about how bringing the one-to-one -one Chromebooks, it opens so many resources for our students, both at home during the school day. And it, another benefit for them was ease in bringing information to students at the appropriate times. They could instantly access announcements and homeworks and grade and missing assignments. And just like that, they could also access coding. If they learn something, they can do it later and they can practice it because practicing is extremely important when you're learning how to code. So definitely a one-to-one -one program is amazing for getting students access to computers. Another one is BYOD, or bring your own device to school. This is usually more inclined towards students that are older. You, in my high school, it's juniors and seniors. They bring their own device to school so that they can learn how to code again by bringing their computer home. But they usually have computers on them. That's the difference between one-to-one -one and that. But they're both good ideas for bringing technology home and to school for giving students access to that um, learning environment, a computer. So next, I wanted to talk about group settings. Usually, well, through this entire talk has really been focused on classes and what students have been doing in school. But doing stuff after school and doing programs, it's just as important. 
the thing that I like most about programs and doing stuff after school is that it's less rigid than an actual school environment. There aren't as many like tests and homework and it's not as much of someone lecturing to students or something like that. It's more, it's more relaxed, it's more flexible. Students get their chance to try stuff on their own and explore in greater detail. Right here, I have a long quote from my Spanish teacher who started a STEAM club at our school. And she talks about how the reason she started it was because someone, she did a scratch activity and someone was really inspired by that and they wanted to do it again. So she realized that there was a group of students who needed an opportunity to learn coding and that's very important, so she started the club. After that, the students really enjoyed it and she wrote, there's no telling what today's middle school students will be able to do with programming in a few short years. And that's really important because when you learn programming in middle school, you're s extremely prepared for high school where it's a huge jump. You can really do it and excel at it instead of um, showing the clip art where it was really hard or anything like that. So finally she wrote that there are friends that go to the club and usually the friends become friends with everyone else and is a huge environment because some students that are there are math whizzes and some like to build things and they're artists and musicians and it's fun to see what happens and that's really important with computer science because kids just, they get to explore and there's no telling what happens when you give um, students a computer and just let them explore. So two things that you need to make sure you do when you do an after school program, because that's usually what I teach, I taught in local library, is make sure you take time for questions, because questions, you have to answer them before it gets out of hand and they mess up on a huge amount of code. And instead of teaching, let, do less teaching and more talking. That might be hard to understand because when you teach, you technically talk, but Instead of lecturing on a huge whiteboard and explaining things, try just like sitting in a circle with everyone that you're um, teaching and just talk to them about it because they really do understand concepts better than when they're being lectured because, I, I don't know, it may just bring on the whole school vibe and that just, whew, you know? So sitting with them in a circle Trying to explain it by just talking to them is a great way to do it after school because there's less of tests and homework assignments. It's way more informal. So yeah, group settings, they're great because students get to explore. Okay, finally, this is, this is really funny for me because a lot of people ask about individual learning. They might not have access to a computer science class or an after school activity, so they ask, hey, how can I learn this outside of that? And I just, I just okay. Book, book, book. There's so much, there's so much out there and it's, gr it's great. There's like a wealth of knowledge to learn programming. What I recommend is if, there's, if it's a child, it's way better to learn coding when you're a kid by using an inter interactive like online course like edX or Coursera or something rather than a book because using an interactive course, it gives you that chance to really be more one-on-one -on -one with the course. You get to try your own examples instead of being just instead of just reading a paragraph, I guess. You get to watch videos and you can um, answer the questions that they have on the course. So online courses, it's, it's great for learning uh, programming with kids because they really get to connect with the language instead of just reading a book. And so there's just more, there's more books and there's a lot of resources out there. And another thing with books is usually they're more for older people, so the language is more professional or just more advanced for kids so they uh, tend to read the first sentence and they're like okay I don't know what this word means I'm just I'm just done you know it's it's okay so that's why it's way better to maybe watch a video in an online course when you're trying to learn something individually so yeah I just wanted to cover so most of this talk was from like middle school elementary school to um, that K to, K to 8 range maybe but high school I talked about how it's a huge step forward. It's AP classes, it's rigorous training in Java. It's really hard and it's part of College Board with an AP test. And so you need to come prepared for that. And that's why instead of just learning scratch in eighth grade, try learning a programming language and try teaching, so teaching something like that because that way you're prepared to enter high school and go to that AP class and actually excel.
And also by doing, by making sure that the timing is right with when you learn Scratch versus a programming language, you can make sure that these clip arts of people being bored with programming or programming too hard, these almost stereotypes can be eliminated and there can be more gender inequality with computer science and STEM where girls can enter the field, um, especially when they have a great beginning to learning computer science. And clubs and programs, they help with that a lot, making sure that um, people can explore it beyond just the classroom is extremely valuable for the students. Right here, I have a quote. It's from the middle school tech teacher at our school. And she wrote that, from working with both elementary and middle, stu middle school students, it's exciting to see technology integrated at every grade level and across every discipline. Students' exposure to programming at a young age opens up more possibilities for the use of technology in the future. I think this sums up the talk really well because it talks about how when students are ex uh, exposed to programming, specifically like Python, or something like that as a step, they're more inclined to pursue it in the future because it's when it's at the right level for them, students are challenged and they get to think outside the box and try solving the problems more. And that really does open up possibilities for technology in the future. All right, so thank you very much for listening to this talk. Um, my email is right there if you would like the slides. And yeah, I, do I have, t I have time for questions, right? <laughs> Oh, no questions? OK. Thank you. <laughs> um, I don't, OK, for girls specifically, there isn't really much that's just for them. I think just including them more, maybe just getting um, more getting them more interested in after school programs if they're not interested in just school because that is somewhat of like a mystery of why it's from the beginning there are more boys in maybe a programming class but i find that just just being just exploring i don't think there's a real specific difference that girls need to have versus guys but i think just more advocacy i guess can definitely get them more interested Thank you. <laughs>